This CV is very near and dear to my heart because it was found and presented by my wife at Black Hat 2020. So it has to do with Bluetooth, and so Bluetooth is of course a short-range wireless communication protocol, and Bluetooth Low Energy shares the name of Bluetooth, but in reality it is a completely different protocol down at the lowest layers, and it's distinct from Bluetooth Classic. The higher layers still use the same Bluetooth stuff, but at the low layers it's different. Bluetooth in general relies on things like pairing in Classic or bonding in Low Energy to establish an encrypted channel between devices, and just in general, part of the reason why there hasn't been historically as much research on Bluetooth is because in comparison with wireless protocols like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth uses spread spectrum, pseudorandom hopping between frequencies. And so it turns out it's a whole lot harder to wirelessly just inject packets than it is for something like Wi-Fi, which is always communicating on a single channel. Now, over recent years, Bluetooth Low Energy has become much more widespread than Bluetooth Classic, specifically because, as the name suggests, it is low energy. And that means you can put it into watches and fitness trackers and shoes and wireless keychains, whatever else, and those things can run for a really long time compared to Bluetooth Classic. Now, down at the lowest layers, BLE parses some packets like a service advertisement packet before requiring anything like bonding. So if the security model in general relies on the notion of two devices are paired or bonded in order to establish an encrypted channel, turns out at the lowest layers, there are some packets that are processed before any of that sort of encryption goes on. Consequently, these are pre-authentication pre attack surfaces that are just consuming acid and parsing it. At the lowest levels, you're going to typically see the packets parsed by vendor-specific firmware. Vendor here means if TI or Texas Instruments makes the individual chip, they're probably going to write the firmware that handles the low level. Or if Silicon Labs or Broadcom or anyone else, they're going to handle the lowest level stuff. And then packets will be, for instance, reassembled and sent up to higher layers. In some cases, the higher layers are in a completely separate chip. For instance, it could be sending the packets up to your x86 Intel processor or your ARM CPU on a mobile phone, or it could actually be handled entirely within the same firmware. So the firmware could have the entire stack and it's processed entirely by the vendor specific firmware. So this bug is not what we're gonna, uh, this, this particular slide is not what we're concerning ourselves with. This is the single chip configuration where You've got the physical layer at the lowest level and the link layer, which is where the bugs are going to be and where her research was. And then there's a host controller interface, which may pass it up to higher levels of stack on the same chip. Or in this case that we're looking at, this is going to be a Texas Instruments chip. The vulnerability is going to occur in the link layer. And this host controller interface is used to pass it off to some completely different chip, where completely different code would handle the upper layers of the protocol. So in the words of power and words of destruction, we are gonna be dealing with a parsing issue here. And specifically, we have this notion of an attacker and this is sort of a sequence diagram of if the victim is scanning for advertisements from other Bluetooth low energy devices, then an attacker can send an advertisement packet and the victim will consume that acid and attempt to parse the advertisement to figure out you know, what kind of services is the attacker offering. So this was what was shown in the original research, but we can't assume you know assembly. So let's go ahead and ask pretty please, uh, dear Veronica, give me the pseudocode for that instead. And she did. So consequently, here's what we have, you know, relatively simple. So I want you to now go look at this code, analyze it and find the flaw.